Michael Killen, and this is my show, The Killen Report, but also tonight at a big event in Silicon Valley, specifically at the Art Ventures Gallery in Menlo Park, I'm going to show a painting, and it is nicknamed the Stanford Painting. It's also nicknamed the State of California's Climate Change Plan Painting. I'm going to share some insights about the two paintings, Stanford and the State of California. But before I do, I want to share something personal and confidential. The owner of the gallery says to me about a week ago, Michael, you're going to show your 15-foot, 6-foot high painting. And I want you to know, Michael, you're not an artist who makes fine art. All the other paintings in my gallery fit the category of fine art, but your painting will not. And, you know, if that is said to most artists, that is like taking a paintbrush the size of a television pole and slamming it into the chest of an artist. But, you know, I went home and I said to my wife, I said, Josephine, Katarina Powers said, I'm not a fine artist. And my wife said, she's right. You're certainly not a fine artist. She says, you are an outsider. You're not, you don't fit with all the contemporary and the past artists who have great educations in art, etc., You're an outsider. And I reflected for a moment back on when I was in elementary school and high school, and so, like everyone else, I wanted to fit in. And then my wife said, Michael, and you're a primitive. And I said, a primitive? Oh, my God. And I started to have the thought, why don't, I, why don't I go to this big event where I am the star, or my painting will be the star, why don't I get dressed up like a primitive, maybe a cave person, or maybe I should get a costume as a gorilla. And then my wife says to me, Michael, do you do know what a primitive is? And I said, explain to me. A primitive is an artist who did not spend four or six years in school studying how to make art. And I said, that's right. I have never spent five minutes in a classroom studying how to make art. And then she said to me, Michael, the value of being a primitive is that when you make art, I am sure you do not think about what teachers teach art students. Because what's bad about that, let's say it's good, but this world does not want derivatives. This world wants new art. And when I sit and make a painting, I do not think of Matisse, Picasso, Soutine, or many, many other artists. I think about the phenomena that I am going to paint or try to paint. And I think about it in a larger context. I think about it in the context that is, I think, most meaningful for the subject I am going to paint. And I also think about the various types of organizations and people around the world that will look at the painting. And by thinking about the type of people out there, business people, nonprofits people, scientists, engineers, political leaders, whatever, I work to make my painting resonate effectively with them. So about a year and a half ago, I took a look at California's climate plan. It has six goals in it. And I decided to interpret each of the six goals on 15-foot, 
six foot high canvases, and in one case, 20 feet long, six foot high. And we're going to see some of those photos, photos of the painting shortly. And you might ask, why would I go and study California's six goals to make six paintings? Well, I tend to look out into the world we live in, and I can recognize that a national security issue is nothing about building a wall between the United States and Mexico. That, that is not a national security issue. That's trivia, really. And we should treat it like that. But climate change is not trivia. Climate change is up there with the threat of nuclear war. It's up there with the threat to our democracy and also the threat what's going on with the Russians and others with social media and for them producing fake news. Those are the great threats of our time. So I set out to paint all of the goals. Before I go any further, Katharina Powers, the head of the Art Ventures Gallery, as soon as she saw me a few days after she said, I don't make fine art, she came over to me and she said, Michael, I think I might have insulted you. I mean, all artists would be upset you know, when they're told they don't make fine art. And then she said, you paint goals. Michael, I have never met an artist in my life who paints goals. I don't think any of them have any idea to how to paint a goal. So right now, I'd like to show you my interpretation of California's climate change goal, which is reduce short-lived pollutions. And maybe we could bring up that photo of that painting right now. OK, this is my painting that I made to help the state of California bring attention to all of our consciousness that we have to stop releasing short-lived pollution or gases up in the atmosphere. Specifically, we want to stop mainly methane. The name of this painting is Methane Joins Carbon to Boil the Planet. And if you look at this painting, it may be difficult to really interpret what's going on. And to some extent, ladies and gentlemen, I make paintings that are difficult to, to interpret by viewers. And there is a reason for that. Maybe it's my lack of skill or maybe it's a certain phenomena that occurs. The second somebody looks at a piece of art and starts thinking about it, right then and there, that image goes into their brain, OK? And, and then they m want to know more about it. And then they read more about it, or they go to one of my speeches, or they watch TV shows or YouTubes and they suddenly are affected by it. And they may even start to think about what the scientists have said about the topic. And they might think about what the political leaders like the state of California, the government of France have said about the dangers of various aspects of climate change. And when they listen to the scientists about these threats, that's getting one layer of information in their head that helps affect how they think. And when they get the imagery that I pr present and maybe other people present, it's a second layer, a second layer that persuades them to, to 
possibly change their actions and do things in this particular case to help the state of California attain its goal. Can we see another painting right now? Another goal of the state of California is to reduce the amount of petroleum in vehicles by 50 percent. And the use of petroleum in vehicles is up there as one of the two top sources of greenhouse gases that are going up into the atmosphere, circling in the earth and increasing the temperature. It is one of the threats that's going to make probably all of our lives more difficult. Certainly our children's lives are difficult. I'm just going to say something about the difficulty of making a, a painting like this. On the left side of the painting, I want to show the impact of the need for us to get away from the combustion engine. That's the circle, and if you could see it better, you'll see how, how the people who make gears, engines, mufflers are going to be affected by our migration to cleaner vehicles. And on the right is the things that are developing that will help us get away from the dirty oil, gas generating cars, using cars. And it includes the high speed train. And I'm disappointed that Gavin Newsom, the new president, the new governor of the state of California, has decided to limit the goals of the high speed train. And this is a very difficult goal to obtain to reduce the use of petroleum by 50 percent because Mercedes, BMW, GM, GM, and Chrysler, all the car manufacturers really cannot forecast what's really going to happen in the marketplace with autonomous vehicles, with clean vehicles. The, there are so many changes occurring in the automobile industry. Those very, very smart people just cannot really forecast effectively or to their own satisfaction what's going to happen. So this is the second goal of California's climate plan that I painted. Can we see the third? And this one is safe. God, California. And um, I wish, oh, we can see it a little better now. And Safe God, California is, for all of us who live in California, is really what we want our government to be doing, to worry about us and try to have policies and laws, programs, etc., that will assure your safety and my safety as we go forward. But as I studied California's plan for Safeguard California, I have to admit, they took a different approach than I decided to take with the painting. Their approach was to tell us all about the different programs that the Department of Resources of California is developing, is executing right now, and all and everything I have read and, and talking to the executives up there, it's all about protecting the shoreline. It's about protecting the forest. It's all, uh, for the most part, about land and resources associated with land. Let me tell you, you can spend your life, the whole state could be worrying about about protecting the land and the shoreline, et cetera. And that's not safeguarding California. Safeguard California, at least in my opinion, and how I, have direct, how I at attacked that issue, was to recognize we all have to prepare ourselves to adapt. In some cases, to move away from the oceans and the rivers or the windy places, adaptation. Another thing that we need to think about before we execute any action is, is it going to lead to making us more 
resilient because the hits are coming and we have to prepare for them and to prepare to spring back. So it's adaptation, resilience. And then everything we do, all actions, all plans should consider, are these actions gonna allow us to be more sustainable? And then the fourth one is mitigation. When you know a threat is coming at you and you can't be adaptive, you can't be resilient, can't be sustainable, you do what the great historic literary character did, and that's Don Quixote. You go out and you fight the giants, okay? And that's what we all have to do when we see threats and we have no other choice. We go and weaken that threat. In this painting, you can see the great yellow on the bottom infinity sign, sustainability. It's hard to see it, but on the right, you see us adapting. You see the windmill on the left, and you see Don Quixote on his horse riding out to fight the windmill. And if you remember your literature, your great literature, Don Quixote thought windmills were great giants. He went out to fight them. That's painting number three, that's goal number three. So can we go to one more? One more goal. And this one and this painting will be the feature painting and the only painting shown in the Art Ventures Gallery tonight and, and for a few weeks. It is an interpretation of California's climate plan goal, double the energy efficiency of existing buildings. You know, there's a tremendous number of buildings out there and, and they're all using and burning gasoline, gas, and other fossil fuels for the most part. And we need to double the energy efficiency savings. Now, how did I attack that particular challenge of making a painting that brings attention to that particular goal? Well, this time I decided to look around the world, the nation, and I discovered that Stanford University, which is very close to my home, had invested almost a half a billion dollars about four or five years ago to build a new energy system that will more than double the energy efficiency savings in their existing buildings. And it will do s some other things that are really also valuable. So I decided to paint California's uh, Stanford University's investment in a relatively unreported technology and to bring attention to that particular example which serves as a model for the rest of the nation, for the rest of the world, especially and particularly for organizations that have small campuses like, like a big Google or other organizations, small cities that might have three, four, five buildings. I decided to paint Stanford's system as a model. And how do you go about doing something like that? Well, yes, I had to go and sit down with the leaders at Stanford that were involved in their investment. And the other thing I had to do was take a look at what existed in the past. What did Stanford exist, build in the past for their energy needs? And so you look at the past and then you paint it. And then you have a chance to talk about and paint the new system and to show some of 
the benefits. So maybe we can have a view at one of the, uh, another painting where, a photo which I have a chance, okay. There is one of my assistants, six-year-old son, Yeshua, and this is the painting that will be featured at the Art Ventures Gallery. And by the way, as soon as it finishes at Art Venture Galleries, Stanford is sending a truck. Okay, it's going to Stanford. And I can't tell you immediately uh, where they're going to put it, what they're going to do with it, but I can say this, Stanford on June 21 will feature this painting at its VIP Silicon Valley Energy Summit 2019. This painting will be in the lobby of the Ariaga Alumni Conference Center when 400 VIP enter that building this painting, the photo of it, will be on the back cover of the program handout given to everyone. I want to share a couple of things about this painting, but mostly about the phenomena. On the left side, it is my image of the previous system that Stanford University had for providing electricity, heat, and cooling. And on the left, we have two red arms going up from the bottom. On the left there, on the bottom. And they are going up, and the one on the inside, on our right, is holding a pot, a teapot. And that teapot is sprewing out steam, and that steam is going into a 20-mile pipe that goes all around, went all around the university providing heat. And the left red arm that goes all the way up represents all the energy that's being used to, as part of heating that steam. And it's going up to the roof, and there's four fans, and out is coming steam, smoke, greenhouse gases, and all of that is waste. Wasted energy, wasted heat, wasted water. And then that white part in the painting comes down like this, and you can't see it too well, and it then condenses, the steam condenses, and you get water, it's all waste water. And in the very center of the painting, above the young man, Yeshua's head, is the earth, and you can see the greenhouse gases that Stanford was emitting surrounding the earth, trapping the heat, causing greenhouse climate change and threatening all of us. And then right to the right, and again it's difficult to see, is a photo of the thinker. And that represents that the top brains of Stanford sat down one day and said, we gotta do something about what we are doing because it's not good for the community, it's not good for the planet, it's not good for our financial interests. And that led them to develop the new system on the right. And that system significantly reduces greenhouse gases, reduces energy costs, water costs, and increases energy efficiency. And the system is not based on steam. Actually, they've taken the 20-mile pipe, upgraded a bit, and now they're just pumping hot water all around the building. And they built a second 20-mile pipe. And that one is sending chilled water all around the campus, 20 miles, providing cooling wherever necessary. And so I am a believer that Stanford has taken a certain technology and pushed it further than any other organization in the world that I know of. And that this new system serves as an example for the rest of the nation, the world. And I would sleep better at night if Davis, 
Harvard, MIT, the government of California, the government of Massachusetts and others adopted the same kind of system to reduce the waste, the wasted heat that they are putting up in the atmosphere, the waste in water, the waste in energy. And so I am now painted four of California's climate plan and four goals. And I believe, I don't know anyone who's ever painted a single goal. And now I am wondering what I'm going to take on next. I might paint another one of the six California goals, but I don't like that goal. It's to double the renewable energy of the state. That's not where the action is. That's not what's really important. What's important is to significantly increase the clean energy because renewable energy is intermittent. It doesn't work when the sun goes down. It doesn't work when the wind stops. It doesn't work when the, everything gets very cold and the skies get cloudy. And then right now you back it up with fossil fuel burning gas. And the main provider of all this gas in my painting and in Northern California is from PG&E. And I actually heard the president of PG&E say, someday we may be prohibited by law from providing energy for, based on the gases. So, I am Michael Killen, and maybe the next project I undertake could be interpreting France's climate change plan. I pick France because if you take a look per capita, how much California emits per person or the United States, you will find it's much higher than the French. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Michael Killen. Thank you very much. Thank you.